If you want to make more money and progress your career, then you've come to the right place because I am about to bestow upon you possibly the best career advice that you're ever going to get. And no, it's not just change jobs every two years and you'll make a ton of money. It is so much more than that. So let's jump in. Why am I allowed to tell you this? Well, over the past few years, I have doubled my salary, found a job I love that lets me work from anywhere and has set me up for long-term career success. And today I'm going to show you how you can do the same. And all you have to do is use strategic thinking and planning. At this point, every millennial and Gen Z person realizes that corporate jobs are very lame. They are not what they used to be. Like when our parents could just like work for 20 years at the same place and then a house, a car and some kids just like magically like materialize from the ether. Instead, we have massive college costs, inflation and just a sense of impending doom that comes with every benefits package. That being said, there are still 90 million working professionals in the United States today. And I strongly believe that the overwhelming majority of these people are just kind of living their corporate lives with no sense of purpose, no sense of direction. They're just like showing up to work on Monday. They drink coffee and go on their phone and wait till Friday. And then on Friday, they drink alcohol they can barely afford to forget about the fact that no matter how long they spin their little hamster wheel, it is going nowhere for them. That sucks, but it does not have to be you. You do not have to be a little hamster spinning your wheel day in and day out. And all you have to do is say it out loud. Ready? So I want you to say it right now. I am not a little hamster. Just kidding, that's not gonna do anything, but you can multiply your salary and you can stack experience that's gonna set you up for success, and here's how. All right, so real quick, I got my bachelor's in mechanical engineering. I started off as an engineer at a large medical device company. I switched to product management at a different large medical device company, and now I am a product marketing manager at a mid-size medical device company company. And so think about what this looks like from the traditional corporate perspective, right? I mean, how does the engineering grad and engineer turn into a product marketing manager, right? Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Well, the answer is I have no idea. I just kind of ended up here. Yeah, no, just kidding. Uh, actually, every move was very intentional, very purposeful, and it all went according to the plan. And so this brings us to the overarching key to multiplying your salary and having career success, which is to plan purposefully and move in accordance with that purpose. What does it mean to plan purposefully? It means you have to actually sit down for a little bit and put a thought or two into where you want to be in life. You have to set your goal. And once you have your goal, you work backwards to figure out the steps you need to take to get there. And what does this look like in practice? Well, it looks like finding someone who is currently in the position that you want to be in and then looking at the steps that they took to get there. You do not have to reinvent the wheel. For example, when I was an engineer, I was listening to a town hall meeting where the president of our division was speaking and he mentioned that he started as an engineer. And I was like, whoa, that dude started as an engineer. I'm an engineer. Maybe I could be where he is. And so I went on LinkedIn. I literally, I looked up his profile. I looked up his past experience. I looked up, you know, where he started. And I looked up other people that did the same thing that he did or similar things. And then I have my roadmap and it's that easy. So to get your plan, you go on LinkedIn, you look up the people who are in the place where you want to be. You find out all their experiences. You write down all the ones they have in common. And that's your plan. That's literally it. And now you have your plan, but how do you actually move in accordance with it? And this is where a very important concept comes in that I call the bridge. If you have a goal of becoming like a super expert in something, like you want to be like a senior principal, like mega software engineer at your company, or you want to be like the best salesperson at your company, then you might not need to use the bridge. But if you want to be like the president of a division or a CEO or a CEO, COO, then you're going to need a variety of experiences to equip you for that role. And this is where the bridge comes in. The bridge is all the skills and experiences that you have that overlap with the skills and experiences that are required for the role that you want to move to. And so this, this bridge, this, this overlapping experience is what crosses the gap between functions. And this is how you move from function to function. Using myself as an example, I knew from my planning stage, like when I went and wrote down all those experiences from LinkedIn that I knew I needed to get, I knew that I needed three types of experience. I knew I needed engineering or technical, I needed sales and I needed marketing. Now I already had the technical experience because I was an engineer, but I had zero sales or marketing experience. What I did have, however, was experience leading complex projects, uh, working in a cross-functional team, presenting complex topics to leadership in an understandable way, 
and this was my experience bridge this was the bridge for me this was all the th experiences that i pulled out of my current role that i molded and tailored to fit to the next step in my path so to identify your bridge you need to do three things you need to understand how your industry works so that you know what moves you need to make you need to research the skills and experiences needed for your next move and you need to be self-aware of the experiences that you have that may overlap with the experiences required for your next role. And this is the hardest one. I talk to people all the time who undervalue the experiences they have because they do not realize that they're not self-aware enough to realize that what is like natural and baseline and intuitive to them is not necessarily intuitive to someone else. You know, what you're used to doing all the time on a daily basis that comes naturally to you does not always come naturally to someone else. For example, if you're like a software engineer, right, and you write code when you work with like a team of other engineers, right, the bridge is not the code writing. Let's say you want to become a product manager. The bridge is not the code writing. It's not the hard skill. It is the fact that you work in a team of other engineers and you know how to solve a complex project and use customer oriented thinking to come to a solution. See, it is the soft skills that can transition you to a new role. But to actually understand which of these you have, you have to actually think about what you're doing and you have to be self-aware and realize the, th the skills that you are building every single day, even though you may not realize it if you don't think about it. This is 100% the hardest part to figure out and it varies widely from individual to individual and from industry to industry. So if you wanna learn how to find your experience bridge and how to execute a highly valuable career move, hit the subscribe button and watch my future videos because I will bequeath this knowledge unto you for you to use in your career. Okay, so you've laid out your path and you now have your bridge that lets you traverse that path. So now you can actually start gaining experiences that let you move along the path. And this is the number one thing that most people do not understand about making money in the corporate world. It is not as simple as just change jobs every two years and then you make a ton more money. No, it is not that simple. It is much more than that. The reason why people who change jobs every two years make more money is because they are stacking experiences that make them more valuable. And this is what you have to do. You have to constantly be compiling high value experiences that increase your value and in turn will increase your salary. And the sum total of these experiences is what I call the stack. The stack is the thing that actually gives you the potential and the ability to make more money and multiply your salary. It's not just the job hopping. That is not the point of job hopping. The point of job hopping is getting the experiences that let you zoom out, see the bigger picture, and actually understand how your industry actually works. Because the path you laid out is not just a series of stepping stones that like, you have to navigate until you finally like cross the finish line. No, it is the tried and true representation of the highest value experiences that you can stack. And it will eventually put you in a position where the next logical step in your career is into that dream role because your stack is such that you are now the best person for that role. The key to the stack, and this is how people get to be like CEOs and leaders of massive divisions and companies, is that you have to constantly be acquiring and evaluating, you have to constantly be evaluating whether the experience that you're getting is gonna be valuable in the future. And if it's not, then you've done one of one of two things. Either one, you pathed wrong and you have to go back on LinkedIn and you have to go write out the steps again because you made the wrong step. Or two, the job you acquired was misleading and it wasn't what you thought it was gonna be. You thought it was gonna be the right job, but it just wasn't what it said it was gonna be, right? And so now you have to go and what do you do? You course correct. You have to go back to the drawing board or go continue applying to jobs and then pull out whatever experience you can from this current role and add it to your bridge so that you can get into the role that is the right step for you. So I mentioned this a little bit before, but if you want all this to work for you, if you wanna be successful, you have to do one thing and that is you have to zoom out. And what that means is you have to like view your life from a bird's eye view of like, here's point A, here's point B, and I'm figuring out the path of how to get from point A to point B. Because every day in your job, you're doing like the micro tasks. You're, you know, preparing spreadsheets. Maybe you're making cold calls. You're doing like financial statements. I don't know, but like all the micro stuff. And what you have to do then is zoom out and figure out how those micro tasks, how those fit into the business, fit into your industry and fit into the world as a whole. And you have to take, you have to convert the sum of the micro tasks that is your job. You have to convert those 
into a stack of mac stack of experiences that can move you forward in the macro and this is what zooming out is and by doing the steps that we've already talked about by researching where you want to be and who's already there emulating those people maximizing those high value experiences you are zooming out just by by the nature of doing those activities and so this is really the key that ties them all together you cannot do these activities if you have a micro mindset you have to zoom out to a macro mindset a common example that i hear from people who are not thinking this way is they say things like i don't want to leave my job because i really like my co-workers or they'll say things like i if i leave my job they I'm irreplaceable and so all my coworkers are going to be left with a bunch of work and I feel bad. Shut up. That does not matter and that is micro thinking. To zoom out from the problem, you have to ask yourself the question, is X thing more important to me than my goals and my purpose? And in this scenario, the question that you're going to ask is, is my relationship with these people and their well-being more important than my own goals, my own financial stability and the well-being of me and my family? Obviously, the answer is no. If you ask these questions and you honestly answer them, it is easy to zoom out. You cannot get caught in the micro tasks and in the micro interactions that you have with people or it will hold you back. You will not become more valuable and therefore you will not make more money if you do not zoom out and allow yourself to pursue experiences that increase your value and add to your stack. But if you do the things we've talked about, if you set a goal, if you find the path, if you emulate the people who have done it already and you maximize those high value experiences and you mold yourself into someone who is worthy of the position you are pursuing, I promise you, even if you don't end up in that end position, your salary will multiply along the way because you are turning yourself into a highly valuable person. I know this because I am literally a living example of having done this. I started out as one thing, as an engineer. I moved to a product management position with a pay increase and now I'm getting new experiences and now I moved to product marketing where I've used all of those experiences. I currently use them in my job and I'm now a highly valuable person in my organization because I know how all the other stuff works. Therefore, I get compensated accordingly. So if you want to do the same, hit the subscribe button, comment below on how your journey is going in your career and I will see you in the next one.